This video is meant to go through the difference between the terms interval data and ratio data. Now this isn't something that the students in my class need to know, but there are some students at UW who have been asking about it, so we're making a video for it. First off, if your teacher is using the terms interval versus ratio, make sure that that doesn't refer to integer versus rational data, which is just like the terms discrete and continuous, and there are other videos on that. When the students here need to know about interval versus ratio data, they're talking about something different, which is like this. The data where you want to know about the differences or where you're doing a fraction, which is dividing. So, often when we talk about interval versus ratio data, we're interested in comparing two groups each other, with each other, and we're interested in looking at the difference between them for interval data, and we're interested in some fraction for them. So let me give you an example to help clear this up. All right? If we wanted to look at the age of husband versus wife. okay. So if I tell you that Anne and Bob are married and I tell you that Bob is 30 years old and Anne is 27 years old. Well in your mind you compare those two by taking a difference. You say well, obviously, Anne is three years younger because you took 30 minus 27. I forgot what numbers I used. I really should have wrote them down. But you did a subtraction in your head to compare those two. Now, let's talk about something different over here. What if we talked about the height at age three and the height at age five? Okay, so here we might talk about a ratio. The height at age 3 versus the height at age 5, at age 5 they are 20% taller. 20% of what? Well, using the word of means you're trying to multiply it because you're thinking about things in fractions. We would take how tall the 5-year-old was and how tall the, they were at age 3 and we would divide those numbers to say they have grown 20% taller. And somebody else, maybe you look at their data and you're saying, okay, well, it looks like they've grown 15% taller. Well, they didn't grow quite as much. Somebody else has grown 50% taller, they shot up. That'd be really weird. Three-year-olds and five-year-olds. No, that doesn't work out. Here's the point, though. Do you think of these things by subtracting, or do you think of them by dividing? Let me give you another example, and I'll show you how you go through this thought process. Let's say we're interested in salary. We want to know, is salary interval data or ratio data? Well, imagine if I took two people. We've got Ann and Bob again. Ann earns $30 an hour. Bob earns... $20 an hour. And then I ask you, how much more is Ann earning than Bob? If in your head you said $10 an hour, great. You think of salary as interval data because you took the 30 minus the 20 and you got 10. On the other hand, if you said Ann is earning 50% more than Bob, that means you think of salary as ratio data. Okay? Because Ann is getting $10 more, 10 is half of what Bob's getting, so she's getting half of what Bob's getting more. So you could have one variable salary and two people might give you different answers. One person says, I think of it as interval data, I want to take differences. Someone else says, I think of it as ratio data, I want to take fractions. And really I could play with this and probably get you to switch your answer. If I said Bob earned $20 an hour and earned $21 an hour, in your mind you'd probably do a difference because that's easier math. But if I said Bob's earning $20 an hour and Ann, I made her earn $40 an hour, you'd probably say to yourself, Ann is earning double what Bob does. And Ann has a really good job. Suddenly we're all jealous of Ann. The point is, in that case, you would start thinking of it as ratio data. So depending on how you think of these numbers, you might try interval data or ratio data. And now ask yourself the question, does it matter which one? And the answer is yes, actually, statistically it does matter. But for the purposes of what an introductory statistics student needs to know, no, you just need to be clear on the way you think. All right? Now, the deeper statistical stuff, I'll actually put it in this video. But if you're an introductory student who just wants to know the difference, I hope this was helpful. You don't need to go any further. You can turn off the video. Go ahead and turn off the video. I won't be offended. This is what you needed to know. I'm not offended at all. Go ahead. Are they done? The jerks? How could you not want to know? Doesn't this just bug you? I'm interested. How could you? Uh, that's okay. We have now lost the losers, and the rest of you who are fantastic people can follow along with me on my next example. 
Let's say we have a class to prepare people to take the SAT. And we measure their SAT score before they take the special class and their SAT score after they take the special class. To me, I think this is clearly a differences type of question. We want to know how much did their score increase, not what is the percentage of the increase, just how many extra points are they getting on their SAT score. The method that we would use to do this is matched pairs, and many introductory classes do go through what's called matched pairs experiments, but probably not at the beginning. And knowing the difference between interval and ratio is something you usually learn at the beginning. So just delete matched pairs from your mind and just know that at some point that name will come back. If we were to graph this data, though, what would it look like? Let's put on this axis the scores they got before, and let's put on this axis the scores they're getting after. Okay? So this student did really bad before, and after, hopefully, they did a little better, right? So here's kind of the line that says they stayed the same. This student did okay before and after the class they did a little better. So most of our dots are going to be above the line. But occasionally we're going to get some dots below the line. And so here's the kind of picture that we would see with interval data. We see a swath of data following some line. Okay? For ratio data, it's a little bit different. Let's look at um, how long you spend on your homework versus your test scores. So this is homework time and test scores. The question is, are these test scores going to be interval data or ratio data with respect to the homework time? Well, I'm going to argue that it's going to be ratio data, and here's why. This person who spent very little time on the homework, they're going to get pretty low scores on the test. All right. But there's some variety there. These people spent a decent amount of time on the homework, and they're getting scores are kind of all over the place. But these people spent lots of time on the homework, and they're getting scores all over the place. So what do we notice here? There's this spread and increase in the variability. So with interval data, we have this constant variability. With ratio data, that variability is increasing. This means, theoretically, mathematically, the way you would analyze these two data sets is different. Here you're using fractions, here you're using differences. I'll tell you which one's nicer. Matched pairs with differences, that one we can do. In fact, many introductory classes do go through how to do matched pairs. With ratio data, the math is a little trickier. When you divide random variables, funny stuff happens. So this kind of data set is a little trickier to manage. Thanks to computers, it can handle the math for us. There's nicer ways of doing it. But there's variety here because even doing lots of homework doesn't guarantee you you're going to get great test scores. A lot of variety happens here. So how would we talk about the effect of test scores? Well, as you spend more time on homework, your scores are going to increase a certain percentage. Okay? If you do an extra hour of homework, then 20% of the points you would have lost, now you're going to get them right. See the idea? So does it matter whether you do interval data or ratio data? The answer is yes, there's theoretical things. What do you need to know? Just the idea. When you compare two individuals with this type of variable, do you subtract them or do you take a fraction of them? And that's how you can tell whether it's interval or ratio data.